The Lauren Agee case was hastily closed by authorities, but many questions remain. Come behind the curtain with private investigator Sheila Waisaki as she uncovers the truth about what happened to Lauren. This is Without Warning. Sign up for my Patreon where you'll receive the inside scoop to the Lauren A.G. case as well as future investigations. Choose from three tier levels that include evidence such as police report, profiles, autopsy reports, photos, and much more so you can make your own informed investigation. PI Magazine is the most respected magazine of the professional investigator, featuring stories and articles on current topics, equipment reviews, investigative tips, and practical advice for the professional investigator. Don't miss a single issue of PI Magazine. Subscribe today at PIMagazine.com. Warning. The following episode contains details about sexual violence and elements that are graphic in nature. Is there anybody else that you would think other than the Chris Stroud guy? I mean, no, not really, because if the you know, if the canoe was still there, the only other person I would question is Clint. Was did would, did you meet up with Lauren? Did you see Lauren? But the only reason why I would leave Clint out of it is because the canoe was still there. Oh, okay, yeah. Never mind. So, okay, that's the only, like, that's those two guys are the only people because she was laid up in the email with him and she kept talking about how she wanted to see him. But when they woke up in the morning, that's the first thing she was like, maybe she went, she went to go find Clint. But the canoe was still there. Related to all this, like um, I was, me and Lauren were best friends in high school, and okay. then it continued over until after high school. Um, okay. She was like, well, I wouldn't say we were as close as we were in high school, but we like continued our friendship. And when I, Lauren was always the, the life of the party, and then once I had my daughter, I, I strayed away from that. This is Samantha Arnold. You heard about her in the first few episodes. She invited Lauren to Wakefest originally, but then she told Lauren there was no room in her car. You also heard Samantha talking about Aaron Lilly to Jeremy Taylor in a previous episode. Samantha and Lauren were with each other periodically throughout the weekend. So Wakefest happens in July, and then do you go every year? No, this was actually, that was my first year going, and a bunch of my friends went down there, and then Lauren and Hannah and Aaron, and I went with my best friend Cassie, and we all just met up down there and hung out with each other, and then went to Wakefest. Me and Cassie got there at about 2 in the afternoon. Um, on we, which day? On Friday. Friday. Okay. Oh, this is Friday because um, it was National Tequila Day. Yeah, at when we celebrated at Wakefest, and it we were we got there at two, and our friends that we were staying with was that we we're not going to be there until six, but we went ahead. I don't like driving in the dark, and I drove, so I was like, let's just go ahead and go, and we can just hang, go to the bar, and like we can go see our cabin, and we'll just. Do whatever. We'll meet up with everybody. So, did you talk to Lauren before you went? Did yes. you know she was going? Yes. Okay. Yeah. She she knew that I was going for my birthday, and she tried to go with me and Cassie. Okay. But the okay. thing was, is that we like we did it by spots on the boat, and there wasn't enough room on the boat for another person because we already we were already two people over, so I couldn't invite another person. Okay. But they went with their group, and Lauren just texted me like the day before we were leaving, and she was like, "I'm going. I'm going with Hannah and them." So. Just find me when you get down there. I was like, okay. So we went down there, and me and Cassie are at the, like, the bar goes like a U-shape, and me and Cassie are over here, and Cassie and Hannah don't like each other because it's, it's Cassie's my best friend, and Hannah's my best friend, but their Cassie ex-boyfriend is Aaron, and Hannah's dating Aaron. Oh, got it. So they so were like, a lot of rivalry. Yeah, there was, okay. um, and actually, they got into a heated argument. Cassie and Hannah had a heated argument inside Fish Lips over Aaron. Cassie was telling Hannah that she had been with Aaron, and she had the text messages to prove it. 
Cassie told Hannah to come out to the car so she could get her phone and show Hannah the text messages. When they left Fish Lips and got to the parking lot, Hannah grabbed Cassie's hair, pulled her to the ground, and hit her. Aaron was standing there watching the whole thing. And then that's when Hannah and Cassie got in their little argument. And what time of day was that? About like one in the morning. Oh, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. So on Saturday. Saturday. Okay. This is 1 a.m. on Saturday. Okay. They got in their little heated argument. And, and when you say heated argument, what do you mean? Um, over the guy yeah it cassie got drunk and decided to say something to hannah and hannah was just like dude it's my boyfriend just drama and cassie left wake this like completely she just got up and yeah left. like with all my stuff in the car i mean my bag and it's your car right well you drive. i drove her car oh got it so i mean we had my entire bag my eno my blanket, my pillow, my bathing suits, my toothbrush. I mean, everything was in the back of her car, and she just, yeah, everything. I mean, my bags and everything. And um, she left Wake Fest. That's the reason why I stayed on the cliff. Um, but hence, say that again. I stayed on the cliff with Lauren that night. So you were there that night? Uh, I was there Friday night, not the night that she passed. Gosh. She passed on Saturday. I was there Friday night. Okay, got it. And all day Saturday morning. So that's when Lauren was like, well, you can just stay with us. And I was like, where are y'all staying? And she was like, up there. And I was like, holy crap, how are we getting up there? And she was like, well, we're going to canoe over there, and then we're going to I'll show you how to climb up. I was like, okay, cool. Well, we ended up drinking more. And then me, or apparently. All right, now describe that. So you and Lauren ended up drinking more, or everybody? No, just me. I mean, just me. You and Lauren. Yeah, but this was Saturday morning, right. morning like 2 in the morning. Mm-hmm. 2 a.m. Yeah, and so we're like we leave the bar. I don't know what time we left the bar, but I know that it was just me and Lauren leaving. And she was like, everyone else went back to the campsite. Like that's why me and Lauren continued to drink because everyone else decided to go back camping. We're like, we're not ready to go. So they left, and she was like, all right, well, are you ready to go up? And I was like, yeah. And so we walk in like on the dock, and it takes a while to get over to where the canoe has to pick us up. Like a little walk, probably like five minute walk on the dock. Me and Lauren. Yeah, except for. So you guys walk to who? Where's the canoe? The canoe. Okay. So here. Can I draw it? Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> so here, I get another. Here's fish lips. Right. Here's okay. the cliff. Okay. So you're having to walk like on the docks and say that here, here's the ending of the dock. Okay. So you have to walk through the dock, and I mean, when we got here, when me and Lauren sat down and we were talking, she was like, "I miss you. I hate that I'm not being uh, able to be in your life more than, you know." than I am, but like you realize that you have a baby, I don't, and I just want you to know that I'm always there for you. I was like, yeah, I love you, don't worry about it. Like, we, it's it's weekends like this that we get to have, just like randomly, that just know that we care about each other, we love each other, and just because we don't talk to each other every day, it doesn't mean that we're not friends. Right. She was like, yeah. So the canoe is right here. So okay. they had to get in the canoe and like paddle all the way How'd over they here. know to get you? You can, when we're standing right here and you yell, they can hear us. Oh, so you can yell from here and they can hear you at the top of the... Yeah. I find it very interesting that she said you could yell from the cliff down to the dock. Me and Lauren are right here. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's houseboats everywhere. Okay. And me and Lauren are like, come get us! And they're like... Okay, we're we'll coming. We'll be there in about seven minutes. Because I guess it was like a seven-minute canoe. Or like ten minutes. How big is the canoe? Uh, enough to fit three people. So that's me. That means one person went and got you. One, one person went and got us. And then we got in. I mean, the entire way back, I'm like freaking out. Because the person can't see anything. Are you guys all rowing? We know, just one. Just one person yeah, because if, Yeah, because if both, like, if more people were trying to row, We'd have to sit up on our knees because if you sit down in the canoe, it's like to my shoulders. So one person had like a bench that he sat on and he canoed it. So me and Lauren just sat there and we were talking the entire way back. And I was like, this Yeah, who, who picked you up? Which one? It was, Chris was the one that picked us up. Oh, Chris got you. Uh, Chris okay. Dow, whatever the last his last name Okay. Was. I don't know. Um, but you didn't see her Saturday night. I saw her Saturday at 5.30. Okay. But it's Saturday night, you don't know how if she drank or not. Well, no, I know that her and Callie got in an argument. Callie. Callie is Clint's girlfriend. Okay. Her ex. Lauren's ex boyfriend was there with Callie. Callie. I don't is know her last name. And her ex girlfriend of who? No, she is the girlfriend of Clint. I'm sorry. All right. Girlfriend of Clint. Of okay. Clint Martin. And I know that her and Callie got into it on Saturday night. Samantha claims that Lauren got into a fight with Callie, Clint's girlfriend 
who was with him at Wakefest, but Clint, Callie, and all the other witnesses I spoke to said that never happened. Friday, I remember walking in and seeing, like, uh, Samantha Arnold or whatever, one of their friends figured Lauren was with them, so I just kind of avoided it and walked to the back and went and played cornhole and stuff with my buddies in the back. So that was the only... I didn't even really see her, so I just went. I figured that she was with them, so I just kind of went and mosey on to the back. Tell me, first of all, did you talk to Lauren before Wakefest? No. Did you text her before Wakefest? No. Did you text her during Wakefest? No. I actually had her number, because I was, I was starting to date another girl and talk to another girl. So Callie, I kinda, right? Yeah, Callie. So I kind of had her blocked so right. I, you know, with all that. So I had no even clue about any of that. Okay, that's a good thing. Yeah, Lauren told me several times on Friday night that she was going to try to go find Clint. Okay. Throughout the weekend. She was like, I'm going to find him, I'm going to talk to him. And I just, like, that's when I kept telling her, like, you got Chase, you got Chase. And then when I told her I was going to go home with Bill Mitchell, she was like, no, I want to go home with Bill Chase. I'm like, well, come on. Okay, now, Clint... He was he ever up in the on the cliff? Yeah, not that I remember. I mean, I mean, the I mean, know if they ever talked. Movie or, I, there I was think, talk know. of it, but not from what you I know. saw. Yeah, I get it firsthand. Um, yeah. And that's her uh, ex boyfriend. Yeah, like okay. Chase is her new boyfriend, yeah, and the boyfriend before Chase was Clint. I ran into Lauren, and Lauren was like, "Come drink with me." And I was like, "No, I think I'm just gonna go home. I really miss Mitchell. I really just want to go home and see my boyfriend." She was like, "Oh my God." I want to go home too. And I was like, well then go home with me. I'll take you. And she was like, I can't, my car's here. And I was like, well Hannah drove your car up here. I was like, if you really want to go home and see Chase, I'll be more than happy to take you back. And Hannah can just drive your car home in the morning. And she was like, who's driving you? And I said, Cassie. Cassie didn't drink. Like Cassie mm-hmm. was just mad about the whole night before. Right. So I think she had like a beer, but she didn't drink. So mm-hmm. she was like, I'll, if you're ready to go, I'll take you home. If you're confused, it's because Cassie came back Saturday after she ditched Samantha on Friday night, leaving Samantha with nowhere to sleep. This is how she ends up on the cliff with Lauren and the others Friday night. And so Lauren was like, all right, find me in five minutes. Let me go tell Hannah. And I waited there and waited and waited. And she never came back. And I was like, I'm going home. So I just, I knew she wasn't going to get it, but I texted her and Hannah and I said, When you get home, let me know. But I'm going home to be with Mitchell. Samantha Arnold just stated that she texted Lauren, telling Lauren to let her know when she got back. We have Lauren's phone. There was no text from Samantha Arnold. Now you will hear my interview with Teresa and Evan. Evan was a longtime friend of Lauren's who was with her on Saturday night. Evan's cousin is Clint. Teresa is Evan's mom and was well known among Evan's friends. She spent time with Lauren on Saturday night catching up with her and making sure she was all right. First night, we went down to Fish Lips. Evan goes, Mom... Lauren's here. I said, you've got to be kidding. And so, you know, she come over. We talked for quite a while. And, you know, they just went on their merry way. They did whatever. And then Saturday night, when I came in, she was sitting there and she was talking to some other people. And I I couldn't tell you who didn't pay attention. But anyway, she goes, Miss Teresa, she goes, you're always doing stuff for me. She goes, let me buy you a beer. And I said, well, okay, Lauren. I said, I'll let you do that. So the bartender comes back, and um, she she was going to get somebody else a drink, too. And the bartender came back, and she says, "Uh, your card doesn't work. And Lauren goes, wonder why? I said, probably because you've spent all your money. And so I said, don't worry about it. I'll get it. So, you know, I picked it up. And we sat there and we probably talked for a good hour, I would say. Probably a good hour. And then I said, well, I'm getting tired, blah, blah, blah. I said, I think that we're going to get ready to head on back up to the campsite. 
Lauren had said they were camping, and I thought she said they had a cabin. We've heard that before. And so if I had known that she would have been up there, I wouldn't have cared if Clint was there or not. She would have, we would have just said, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not letting you stay up there. But she told me that they had a cabin. So Evan comes back and he says, Mom, do you mind to leave me your credit card? And I said, with all these kids around here, I said, uh-uh. And he goes, well, he goes, Lauren's here. And he goes, all the other ones are back. Clint and Callie were playing cornhole over here in the back with a bunch of other kids mm -hmm. that was they were all hanging out with. And I mean, they knew everybody up there because we've got a lot of boat friends. And so I told Evan, I said, you can only use my credit card, but the only person you can do get any drinks for is Lauren. I said, nobody else but Lauren. So my tab was $35 on my Discover bill. So, you know, that's not a lot. But I want to think my tab was $35, and that included the tip. Evan was the last person to see Lauren before she left Fish Lips. They spent the evening at the bar, catching up, having a great time, drinking. He knows how many drinks she had. He knows her demeanor. He is a third party who has nothing to gain in this case except to tell the truth. We had a very, I mean, fun night, which, you know, Clint was there with Callie, and, you know, I knew that they weren't going to associate with each other, mm -hmm. so... I know that Lauren's group had left for a little while. I don't know where they went, but Lauren stayed there with me and me and her were, I mean, it's almost like me and her were on a date that night. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, her card had declined. <laughs> uh, mom was generous to, enough to, which mom said, all right, well, here's my discover, you know, pay for you and hers drinks for the night. Here's a gift. And, uh, you know, just Sweet. don't get too crazy with the card. How many drinks do you think Lauren had? I think I personally bought Lauren maybe three. Okay. Four max is what I would say. And from being around Lauren, you know, multiple times while we were drinking, she handled her alcohol very well. That's one of the reasons why when I spoke to, uh, what was his name? Dennis. Dennis, yeah. yes. I, you know, I said she didn't seem intoxicated to me because mm -hmm. she didn't. We have many witnesses that claim Lauren was not intoxicated to the point where she did not know her surroundings. Evan claims she was able to hold her alcohol well, and that matches with what other witnesses have said. Did you notice any bruising on Lauren Saturday? night did she talk to you about cliff jumping or she didn't to me okay what she, about you she did to me you said that she had uh they were cliff jumping and she had like hit the water wrong or something like that like i don't know what it was but okay that's good to know yeah she had hit the water wrong and you know it was just like a little sore mm-hmm did she have any bruises or did she show you any bruises on her body? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did she have long sleeves on? No. Okay. So if she had bruising on her arms, you would have seen it. I would have saw it. Would you have asked her about it? Oh, yeah. I okay. Mean, if I, I would have saw that and she would have, you know, said, you know, I hit the water wrong. Well, did it do that? <laughs> right. As a nurse, I'm pretty observant, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, Evan can tell you, if, if I would have noticed something on Lauren or bruising or her arms, because I, I believe she had on a black sleeveless top, I'm, I'm almost sure she did. What about, and she, you think she had shorts on? Mm -hmm. yeah, so she, you would have seen her legs mm -hmm. if they were bruised as well? She had like bright white or bright pink mm -hmm. shorts on. I want to think she had on black and white Converse tennis shoes and a black shirt and white shorts. Clint remembers seeing her in a similar outfit as well. Last time I seen her, I know what she was. I know she was wearing. It was either a 
navy blue, kind of like a, I guess you could call it like a tank top, but it was like a thin material. It was navy blue with black. She's wearing that with white shorts. I know that's what she was wearing. With white that, shorts, they, not hot pink? They all claim she was wearing white or pink shorts. She was found wearing hot pink shorts. But listen to what Sherry says about her white shorts. I want to say they were white, but pink. I mean, at night, and they're white and pink. But I, I could have swore they were white, but okay, I don't. That's okay. That's okay, because her white shorts are missing, too. We have not been able to locate those. Lauren's white shorts weren't the only things that had gone missing from that weekend. We will talk about this more in depth later on. For now, let's go back to my interview with Evan and Teresa. What did you do after you left Fish Lips that night? After we left Fish Lips, um, me, Clint, and Callie had actually met some people that were at the bar and they were celebrating like a graduation party or bachelor party or something like that. And they were staying at the next level up in an RV Mm -hmm. and asked us if we wanted to come uh, hang out with them after fish lips. So me, Clint and Callie all went up there and there's no telling how long we stayed up there. I mean, everybody, once we, you know, finally left, that group's RV mm-hmm. and came down to the uh, our campsite. Mm-hmm. Everybody was asleep. Okay, but um, I know that they were back because Evan stayed in the thing with us. I slept then, on the floor. Mm-hmm. I think that Evan told me Saturday night. Lauren had told him, ask him if she could stay at our RV, and Evan says, "Well." Mom won't have a problem with that, but Callie and Clint are there, and I don't want that to be a big issue. And he said, well, she said, well, nah, forget it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so Evan said that when they were all leaving together, I believe Evan said they all left together, that Lauren was waiting on them to come back to pick her up. And so Evan felt really guilty because he didn't stay with Lauren. But then the man at the um, marina told Evan that her friends did pick her up. Mm -hmm. Because Evan thought, you know, some strange person has come and, you know, I've left her. And I mean, he felt really, really bad. As an investigator, it just makes common sense to look at an ex-boyfriend or any boyfriend in any case. Chase was at his house two hours away with friends. Clint was at Wakefest, so of course any investigator would speak with Clint. The campers pointed their finger at Clint, including Samantha Arnold, which she says here. The only other person I was watching is Clint. Did you meet up with Lauren? Did you see Lauren? And she kept talking about how she wanted to see him. They all claim that Lauren had a fight with Clint They said that Lauren went to see him. They said Lauren had a fight with his girlfriend. So, of course, Clint needed to be looked at, and that is what we're going to do in part two of this episode. Lauren's family gives their full permission for any and all details to be shared in hope that the truth will come out. If you know anything at all, call 1-888-599-0008 or email tips at sheilawysaki.com. Next time on Without Warning. You know, when I saw her in the casket, you knew something wasn't right. You just knew. Without warning, host, executive director, and executive producer, Sheila Waisaki. Producers, Katie Zitzman and Aaron Parker. Editors, Katie Zitzman and Aaron Parker. Mixing and mastering by Resonate Recordings. Narrator, Tim Evans. Thank you for listening to Without Warning. 
make sure you subscribe to the podcast and leave us a quick review to help others discover it too. If you or someone you know knows something about this case or the people involved, you can submit tips by emailing tips at shilawaisaki.com or call toll-free 888-599-0008. If you have questions about the Lauren A.G. case, call 888-599-0008, extension 3, to leave a question. You may also email questions at shilawaisaki.com.